So revisiting our earlier example about purchasing a home, imagine you go to a bank to get a home loan. And in addition to the financial information you give to the bank to evaluate your creditworthiness, they ask you for social information about your behaviors on your phone and your computer, what websites you, you frequent, what kind of games you play on your video game for, for, for how long, what kind of music videos you watch on YouTube. How would that make you feel? And how would that impact how you live your life on a daily basis? So, Dave, how would you feel if this was the situation you were in? This is, I think, um, to be perfectly blunt, I think it's kind of scary. Mm. And it's something that I, I, I don't really get caught up in a lot of the, uh, the more dystopian future of AI and stuff. I feel like we're probably a long way off from that. But this is one area from a behavioral modification standpoint. I feel like there are pretty concrete examples historically, not even that long ago, where broad scale social change through behavior modification, especially when looking at peer groups, family members, educational history, um, religious or other beliefs that lead to fairly broad, dire consequences. So mm -hmm. let's start with the good stuff, yep. right? It's not to be too negative. Um, some of the most successful examples of this in Africa and developing parts of Asia is a really, really simple aspect of social credit, which would be whether or not you pay your mobile phone bill, mm. right? If you are in Kenya and you're utilizing one of the mobile banking uh, payment platforms and you don't have a bank account, um, whether or not you pay your mobile phone bill each month is probably the best example of your credit worthiness. So how likely you'll be exactly. you'll repay based on because you paid your phone bill for right. the last year. I thought when that came out, I thought it was brilliant. Mm. And I think you know millions and millions of people have benefited from that aspect of uh, social credit scoring, right? Gotcha. On the flip side, if you look at some of the other examples of this, where they'll look at browser history, they'll look at how many uh, hours you spend each week playing video games, they'll look at um, what I would t consider more moral decision making, that's the type of stuff that concerns me, I think. Okay, and so is the concern about, when we think about morality, Frequently, people think about, well, who gets to decide what's moral or not? Is that, is that the concern you're, you're, you're referring to? That's exactly right. I mean, think about it. If you're at home, right, who is to say whether your behavior is specifically good or specifically bad, especially when we're talking about accessing credit? Um, some of the examples they gave is playing video games is bad, and so therefore people that play a lot of video games should le be less worthy of credit. Um, even if I agreed with that on a personal level, which I, I don't necessarily, it's very dangerous to think that a small group of people, uh, probably men, who we don't really know who they are or what they're discussing, mm -hmm. they're going to be the ones to determine what is moral and therefore what is acceptable in society. And as we've already discussed, this can have extremely broad implications in terms of whether or not you can buy a house or whether you can get a visa to travel outside the country or in some cases, even determining what types of majors you can have and what types of careers you can mm -hmm. enter into. Yeah, and I think returning to something you did mention about the, the potential risk of the impact will start modifying how people act and behave, I think is really important. And you know, philosophers from a long time ago to more modern philosophers have talked about you know, this idea of what observation does to people's behavior. Right. So even though nobody is coming and compelling you physically to do something, the fact It'll be in, yeah. that you feel like you're being watched, yeah. even though you may not be being watched, yeah. but the fact that you think you're being watched actually starts shaping your behavior. Mm. And that is a very interesting as well as scary proposition. Potentially. And again, now, no, again, not to be too negative here, because the reality is that you and I, we generally conform to the best aspects of human behavior. Mm. That is why, as a species, generally speaking, we get better and better, right? There's less violent crime right now. We, we, ch we tend to mirror mm. the best elements of our humanity. Um, but I'll give you a quick example. So my father, one time, when we were, uh, eight, well, not once, he used to say this a lot as I was young, he would take me to go perform service within the community. Mm. And I, like many teenagers, would go quite begrudgingly and I'd you know, complain the whole way. And he would say to me, if you don't want to do this, then this is not going to be like something that counts as a benefit to you. Meaning that I had to actually want to do it in order for it to be service that would benefit you know, me kind of spiritually or, mm -hmm. or, or you know, uh, uh, psychologically. Yeah. And so this runs into the question of when you are trying to modify behavior from an ethics context, 
can you compel people into a certain type of behavior and then make them good? Can you mm. compel people into goodness? Yeah. Or do you have to educate them and inspire them into yeah. goodness? I see. That's interesting. So the idea goes to kind of the internal or inherent motivation that right. the person has in the action. Exactly. Even though both people may be doing good things, we actually think maybe the motivation for doing the good thing sets them apart. Yeah. And, 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 and if, if history is any example, when societies have tried to compel a good type of moral behavior, um, that often has led to really some of the most dire consequences, socially speaking, because people will not feel that inherent sense of shame or morality in their decision making. And instead, they'll often look to avoid those things and then often become very disassociated as society. Interesting. Yeah, and, and, and it can create some very significant perverse incentives. Okay. And so is that similar to this idea of a checkbox morality in mm. a sense of, hey, if I'm doing these things, that are supposed to be good in society. I'm a good person. Where, in fact, just because you're checking the boxes may not mean that you're actually a good person. Yeah. Well, there's two aspects of it. Mm. One is the checking the box, and so therefore feeling like I'm good, and as long as I tick the box, then I'm therefore a good person. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, anything else I do is okay. It's justified mm. because I've ticked the boxes. But the, the second one, which is slightly more pernicious, is the idea that um, we are ticking the box to tick the box, but we know that that is not necessarily what our true intent or true mm. desire is. And that's when I think some of the more malicious stuff can come throughout. Like, and, and again, there's, there's examples of this historically where you, you can have examples of you know, genocide or significant inequality that's um, perpetuated simply based on false definitions of morality. You know, just to give an example for those that are accused, confused at home, what if based on my sense of morality, I believe that a particular minority race was not worthy of um, voting, not worthy of financial credit, was not allowed to own property, right? I could say that God has told me this is the right thing to do, and that is my definition of morality, when in actual fact, you know, we hopefully as society would say that's actually a pretty terrible thing. Yeah, and, and, and to your point, that's happened myriad times. Many, many times. Across, Very recently. Across the history of humanity, yeah. right? And a lot of that discrimination was potentially was based on religion. Correct. Some of that was based on how we looked, yeah. how, where we were born. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah.